I know he's real. I know this person's voice. Hey babe, I saw your messages and I thought I'd respond back to you. Tell me if I can get this. I know this person I'm talking to. She called me mom. You know, like a normal mother-daughter relationship. Helped her, you know, if she was going through a rough time, like I was, I was mom. I was mom. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. So, are you ready to hear the truth about Philip? On today's episode, we speak to a 50-year-old woman named Yvette who has been in contact with a man named Philip on the dating app Tinder for over four years. She sent this man over $20,000 to help him get home, yet his problems with his bank account seem to always get in the way. Yvette turned to our team to help verify this man's true identity. She wants to know if this is true love or just another romance scam. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Um, well, my name is Yvette. I live in South Florida. I'm very outgoing very trustworthy, friendly, overall very nice person. My marriage unfortunately did not go as I hoped and planned it would, but he didn't think with the right head. We moved from New York to Florida. Just the whole new experience of everyone pretty much that's here being half naked had an effect on him and he did step out of our marriage because this was a grown man that should have known better and did a lot of partying. We are getting separated and divorced. I decided that I wanted to meet someone so I joined dating platforms. First text to me was literally just one word that we still till this day joke about. Hey, that was it, just hey, nothing else. So my response to him was, hey. And we just took off and started talking. It's now been going on for over three years. At that moment, he had shorter hair, 49 when we first met. Tall, nice build, you know, very attractive. Just very authentic, really nice. You know, we both laugh a lot. We both are huge Formula One fans. One day I just started calling him Monkey. And um, and he was like, I really love that you call me Monkey. Because he would always tell me that he was clingy. He was like, I'm really clingy, I'm really needy. He goes, I'm going to drive you crazy because, you know, I'm going to be constantly, like, just very clingy. <laughs> so I I don't know where. He, and I, I know he told me not too long ago where he came up with Koala, but I think it kind of fell somewhere along the same, you know, the same lines, like very soft and cuddly. I think that's what he said. He said, it, Koalas are really soft and cuddly, but they can be really mean and aggressive. He goes, and you're like that. You're really soft and cuddly, but you can be really strong and have like a really strong characteristic to you at times. And I was like, okay, good. Then nothing but koala. Like, that's me. I love how he makes me feel loved, even though I've never met this person. Philip claimed to be everything a woman wanted. He was an architect, handsome, and a gentleman. After a couple weeks, Philip told Yvette he had to go on a business trip. So a lot of the conversation was still, you know, the getting to know you type of thing. But a lot of it was him telling me about this project, this upcoming project that he was putting a bid in for. The owner of the project wanted him to travel out to Turkey to meet with him right away. He's the architect. He has to set up the project. He goes to pay and he can't use his debit card they froze his account and that's when i said you know if you want i can 
I can lend it to you. You know, I can give it to you. He actually had said, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. You know, I, I can, I figure something else out. I reached out, you know, to my brother and my, I think my brother might be able to send it. And I'm like, that's dumb. Like, just let me send it to you. This way you don't waste time. Philip planned to finish his job in Turkey and he would head back to the States with his daughter and start his life with Yvette. While traveling, he would send drawings he sketched on his notepad to Yvette and her daughter. I had said to him at one point, I'm like, I want to see like, you know, something you've done or whatever. So he sent me like a drawing of something that he had worked on. It was like, um, it was like a lobby or something. Then the other pictures were just things that he would just free sketch. So the next time, you know, I talked to him, he's like, he goes, I drew something. He goes, did you get it? And I was like, no, I didn't get it. And he's like, hold on, I'm going to send it. And that, that's what he sent. So he sent, based on what I had told him, what he envisioned. So he envisioned Bella in her room. And then he said, and I said, but that's not how Bella's bed looks. And he's like, no, that's how my bed looks. But I pictured her laying in a bed, so I just drew my bed. Yvette's daughter loved the sketch Philip drew of her in the bed. It was almost time for all of them to finally meet. By this time, marriage was even brought up. Everything seemed to be falling in place until Philip needed more money to get home. Last time I sent money was probably about uh, a year ago, year and a half ago. The owner of the project was going to send me money to send over to him because he didn't have an account there and his account was frozen. He couldn't receive money into his account because he'd have no access to it. He was in a panic to get out of there before because you know countries had already started kind of locking up borders. He has a friend who owns private jets and he said he will let me use his jet if I can pay for the gas. And then after that, he hasn't asked for money ever again. All of the money Yvette sent went to Turkish bank accounts. Unfortunately, Philip is still stuck in Turkey and is waiting for the airport to open back up so he can fly his jet to the U.S. At first, I told my friends um, who were really excited, you know, as I was. I was super excited. You know, my daughter is engulfed in this. His daughter is engulfed in this. Like, we're all wrapped up in this thing. But eventually my friends were like, you know what? There's something not right. Something's not right. Something doesn't seem right. This guy doesn't at even video call you. Philip and I still, till this day, still continue to talk on a daily basis. We call each other at night before we go to sleep. We actually go to sleep together. He keeps, he stays on his phone, I stay on my phone and we literally fall asleep together. When I talk to him on the phone, he sounds English, like British, Aussie, without a hundred percent, without a doubt. We talk about being together in the future and getting married, you know, and spending the rest of our lives together. We were able to get a few voice messages Philip sent to Yvette's phone. Hey, I don't know how, you know, I'm saying, I'm just getting a voicemail straight away. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna try and stay with for a couple more minutes, but I don't know. You have to call me as soon as you get this. After all of the money Yvette dished out, she is still optimistic about being with Philip. She still plans on starting a family with him. This man has been stuck for almost two years. I think the total number of that I have sent within the last three years, probably, I want to say about 20K. I would have said the first half of all of this, I would say romance scammer. But then once he has stopped asking for anything, then where does that leave him? Where does that put him? He's got no reason to continue to talk to me, but he does. I know he's real. I'm talking to a human being. I know that I'm talking to a human being. I know this person's voice. I, I know this person's laugh. I know this person I'm talking to. Clearly there's, there's, there's just 
so many, either so many truths have been told or so many lies have been told. I want to know which side it falls on. And if it's lies, then hey, you know what? You got the best of me. But if it's the truth, I need to know that. I need, I need to know. I need to know because I bought all this BS. I bought it and, and I need to know, was it BS or was it the truth? Because the lies are so good that it's hard to not have a part of you believe that, damn, you know, maybe he is telling the truth. You know, maybe I'm that gullible that I just believe anything anybody says. All right, Seekers, it's time to dig into everything and find these answers for Yvette. We weren't buying the whole flying the jet from Turkey to Florida. This guy's lies were starting to catch up to him. Our reverse image search found everything we needed to know about Philip and his daughter. We were able to find their true identities pretty easily using the tools on our website, socialcatfish.com. After a few days, we set up a meeting with Yvette to go over everything with her, and something strange happened. Make sure you stick around until the end. So, are you ready to hear the truth about Philip? Yes, I am. 100% ready. We felt we had enough information to get Yvette to come to terms, and she was anxious about us looking into Philip, but today was the day she found out the truth. Before we hop into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We are so close to 100,000 subscribers thanks to all of you guys. Thank you for all your support. So how are uh, things with you and Philip going? Nothing has changed. Like, it's status quo. Like, we're, you know, the hope of, you know, being together soon. You know, just wondering which direction, you know, this could potentially be going in. You know, it's very difficult to to speak to Philip and then had, you know, I had this in the back of my mind, like, oh, you know, geez, like, what if, you know, what if this is all legitimate? And and I'm like, I felt like a horrible person. Um, but then at the same, then there was the flip side is like, well, what if it's not legitimate? You know, like, I almost didn't know how to be with him at times, you know, during our conversations. Um but anxious, mostly just very anxious to know, you know, kind of like, I just want to get on with it and know what's happening. Well, Yvette, get ready because we're going to get into all of the information now. Um, hopefully put your mind at ease about your relationship with Philip. So I'd like to start first with the paintings, the drawings that you'd sent over to us. And so the first pencil drawing, I believe it's a man and a woman. That's actually a very popular pencil drawing that's been used over and over throughout Pinterest. It's not an image that was created, originally created by Philip. Okay. Moving on to the other image, we were able to link that back to an account on LinkedIn under a username Ranran. It's a person that creates these pencil drawings. You see here a girl sleeping in the bed. He also has a gallery of pencil drawings that are similar to that style. Okay. So basically the, the drawing, which he claimed he drew of my daughter with the dog in the bed, that was not him. That is correct. The, I'm like flustered right now. The one with my supposedly my daughter in the bed with the dog, that one actually does come as a surprise to me because I really, you know, did think that he authentically did that. So are you ready to hear the truth about Philip? Yes, I am 100% ready. After using all of the search tools that we have available on our site, as well as other tools and software, we were able to confirm that Philip is not who he claims to be. Okay. The real man in the photos is known as Andrew. Yes. I know who he is. You don't seem shocked at all. No, I did discover that those weren't his pictures. And he said that the reason that he used someone else's pictures were because his profiles have been hacked so many times that he didn't want to put his own pictures up. 
Um, but I do know who Andrew is. I'm actually friends with Andrew on Instagram. Um, I've never communicated the situation to Andrew, but I became, I friended him on Instagram. So I do know exactly who Andrew is. So what he's telling you is basically, I'm Andrew, but I'm also Philip at the same time. No, he never said he was Andrew. He just said he used those pictures. You came to us to verify who Philip was. Now, Philip has already expressed to you that he's using someone else's photos. What would make you think that this is real? Because I believed his story. I believed that, you know, because his accounts had gotten hacked, that he, you know, didn't want to use his own personal pictures. So he just grabbed pictures from online and put them on his profile. Like, I legitimately believed that when he said, when he told me. You know, when I confronted him and I said, hey, you know, that's not you. Um, and he told me that I believed it. I authentically believed his story. So I never knew what he looked like, but I knew he wasn't the person in the pictures. So today, do you know what he looks like? No. He claimed multiple times that he has sent me a picture, but I never get them. I never get the pictures that he sends me. I, they could be random things that I'll get, but I won't get the pictures of him. So this is actually a typical romance scam where a person steals images of another person, um, claims to be another person, uh, falsifies documents, falsifies stories, reasons why they need money and funds to help them. The next thing that it's going to lead into is, hey, can I borrow such and such? I was really confused on why Yvette still felt that this guy wasn't lying about every single thing that came out of his mouth. These scammers are good. This shows the amount of manipulation that Yvette was going through. He told her that these photos weren't even of him and she still trusted this guy. So what about the daughter? Do, do you feel like she was real? The same way I felt that he could potentially be real. I almost at times felt that she was more real than he was. So we were able to confirm who Philip's daughter really is. And she goes by the name of Natalie. She is not his daughter. Okay. Again, you know, it's a, a hard blow because I developed a very close relationship with her too. But that's what these people do though. They create this fantasy world of these fake, you know, characters and this whole movie scenario. She called me mom. Uh, you know, like a normal mother-daughter relationship. I gave her advice when she needed it, you know, I helped her, you know, if she was going through a rough time, like I was, I was mom. I was mom. I literally treated her like she was my daughter. Where does all this information leads you in your relationship with Philip. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be easy. This is someone who's been in my life for three and a half years. Um, you know, the conversations we had, I thought were real. Um, it's gonna be hard not hearing his voice and not talking to him. So there's two things I want to go over with you. One, odds are you were not the only person he was scamming. Just by viewing the wire transfers, there are multiple people involved in this scam. Either willingly or unwillingly, we call these money mules. So what this tells us is that you weren't the only person involved in this scam. Number two, you are a beautiful woman and you deserve to be with someone who is real 
and available. It's just disappointing. And I think I'm disappointed almost more in myself, you know, for falling for it, for not, I'm, I'm a very smart person. And to allow myself to be pulled into this whole scenario and this whole situation is just, you know, it, it it's disappointing. I think I'm more, I'm disappointed in myself. I couldn't even care about him and because he's irrelevant to me now, you know, but it's just, I think that's what disappoints me more is that, wow, you know, you, you, you got played. He's a loser though. Listen, hey, he's more than a loser. I won't say what he is. He's definitely a loser. I don't feel pity for him in the least bit. You don't deserve somebody that just lies to you about every single thing. And it just doesn't make sense. Like, I think you're just, you wanted this to be real and you wanted to be faithful to this person, but he just doesn't exist though. That's the issue. Right. And, and that's, you know, I think that's the part that hurts me too, is that I really was to a certain degree, I really was faithful to him. Like for the first, I want to say about two years, I didn't talk to anyone else. Like I was legitimately in a relationship with this person. I was being faithful. I had no interest in talking to anyone else or going out on dates. You know, I put my entire life on hold for this person when I could have been out there meeting people and, you know, like living my life. And I kind of, you know, just fell into it. I really believed I was in a relationship with him. Between you and I, I have a date tonight. There you go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it can come at a better time. Right. Oh, that's, nice. su that's such great news. I really want to thank you guys because you, you know, it's the beginning of the new year and I think this is the best way for me to start the new year is just having the clarity that, you know, I've, I knew I wanted this. So I, I really need to thank you for getting me to this place right now. Thankfully, Yvette was moving on from this invisible man, Philip. She went on a date later that night with a real man with a real name in real life, and she enjoyed it. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday, so please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright Seekers, we'll see you guys next time.